Hi, my name is Sianda, and today I'd like to talk to you about The Secret Lives of Baba Segi's Wives by Lola Shonayan. The book follows the life of a family in Ibadan, Nigeria, as it accepts a new wife whose name is Balanle. At first, it seems as if the main line of tension between Baba Segi and his three wives, Ia Tope, Ia Segi, and Ia Femi, is that Balanle is much more educated than they are. But as the story unfolds, it becomes clear that there's a big big secret at the center of this family that would threaten um, to destroy everyone. We see much of the story from the perspective of Balanle. We join her when she's already decided to join this family despite the fact that her, fam her, her own parents and her own family do not understand why this educated modern Nigerian woman would like to join a polygamous family. And as soon as she arrives she sets her sights on bearing children for the great Baba Segi, and this is when things get a little bit crazy because the wives, the other wives absolutely hate her and they try to do everything they can to drive her away from this family. But their actions and devious plans culminate in an event that threatens to destroy everything they fought to create and maintain and protect. So I didn't actually know anything about the writer of this book before I started reading the story. It was actually recommended to me when I was in Kenya two weeks ago uh, by South African author or Pan-Africanist author Zuki Zawena and Kenyan critic Troy Onyango. But halfway through the book I did do a bit of Wikipedia searching and I, it, 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 it became clear to me um, the author of this book is actually a poet. Uh, Lola Shoenayan is actually a renowned poet before this first novel. And it didn't really surprise me because at a sentence to sentence level, The Secret Wives of Baba Segi's Wives is very poetic. I mean, the use of imagery and metaphor and similes, things that I have never seen before. And these are quite typical of a poet writing prose. I'm going to give you an example um, of some of my favorite parts of this book. The rich have fat bellies. They swagger until the world swings to one side. They have a permanent hunger, you see. For the poor, it is different. They've never known the taste of fullness, so they scramble for leftovers. Not because they are hungry, but because they know, because they want to know, fullness. The contentment that makes the rich think the world is theirs. Another line that I really liked is wisps of braided hair met atop their heads like clasped fingers. Oh wow. Um, and then next, in the distance an old train snorted and let out a gasp before it commenced its daily chugging. <sighs> I hope you guys get why these lines are so interesting and great to me. If you are a poet, please I beg you to write a short story or a novel because if no one else will read it, I will. I love reading books that are written by poets because of the beauty in which they describe the world, especially how they describe things that are familiar to us in a way that is utterly unique. Their comfort and excitement in language is really inspiring. And that's one thing I love about this book. Ola Shonen points paints a poignant really like rich uh, picture of Ibadan and the lives of Baba Segi's wives. So now um, I'm going to talk a bit about the book and I promise I won't have any spoilers. The book is written in a series of almost self-contained point of view shifts. So one section, a few sections are written by Bolane in the first person. The other ones are written by um, or told by the other wives, Ia Segi, Ia Femi, Ia Tope, and they all kind of chronicle how these women entered this polygamous home. Um, and their aspirations and also why they dislike Balanle so much. And this is what I like about this kind of shift of point of view because what it does is it makes the characters who from Balanle's perspective seemed very simple and inaccessible, it makes them large and expansive. Their motives become clear and are thus easy for us to understand so that their cruelty to her doesn't seem cliched but complex and moving. However, my concerns kind of rose in the sections that are written from the third person. You know, there's parts of the book that are written from nobody's specific perspective, from like some kind of omniscient third person view that is kind of viewing all the characters from the top. And I thought these sections were very interesting and very necessary just for the story and the way that it was going to be told. But sometimes I found it a bit confusing because there were parts of it where I wondered if the voice was jumping too much from each person's perspective in one paragraph or in one section in a way that made it kind of disorient, disorienting. Um, 
for example again i'm not going to get into too much detail because this is a crucial part but like for example i would find myself wondering um in this third person view when it was supposed to be seeing balanle and interacting with different characters why we were seeing the scene from so many perspectives in one paragraph especially from the perspective of random characters like a doctor or you know the driver in the beginning as to why we were seeing how he sees the world and how Balanle sees the world and how some third person omni omniscient um, narrator is seeing the world and I found that to be kind of confusing I might be imagining things so if you've read the book and you can defend this practice then by all means reach out to me and I will rethink it themes so before I discuss the themes of this novel I really want to issue a trigger warning to anyone who's experienced any kind of domestic violence or sexual trauma um, there are sections in the middle of this book that might be very difficult to to read and re-experience um, some of these issues that a person might have faced um, however I think Lola Shonayan does a great job of handling this kind of deep and you know, heavy material in a way that is light-hearted, humorous, and ultimately healing. So if someone would ask me what this book was about, I would say this book is actually about the complexity of human motives. Very often in life and in stories, we expect people to have very simple reasons for why they do the things they do. But in the story, the actions and decisions of the characters reflect the, complexi the complexity of real human life. We do very often, like the characters in this book, find ourselves in situations where the right choice seems very obvious to us still we choose to do something else this book is filled with people choosing to not do the right thing and their justifications for that choice are compelling and well dramatized I recommend this book for writers who want to practice writing distinct voices so like I said earlier the book has many sections that are written from the perspectives of different characters in the book and the danger in trying to do this yourself as a writer is that you might end up having the characters sound the same. This is not a problem that the secret wives of lives of Baba Segi's wives have. Um, Lola manages to write each character in a way that is so distinctive and so different from the other that by the time you encounter a character the second or third time, you no longer need to kind of orient yourself to see which one it is. You no longer need to play the guessing game because their voices become so clear, so real, and so natural in your ear that when they try to explain their own logic, even if it doesn't always make sense, you sense that this is the real life choices of a real person. I recommend this for writers who want to make their landscapes familiar. I felt that I really did kind of understand Ibadan besides never having gone there or never having read anything that was set there. Shonayan did an excellent job of describing the city and its subcultures without sounding like a brochure or without making it hard for an outsider to understand. I also recommend this book for writers who want to incorporate humor into difficult material. I talked about the sexual trauma and domestic violence in the story, but a great deal of the book is very, very funny and very clever. For example, the description of Baba Segi's stomach and how it reacts to, uh, to his feelings always, always made me laugh. I'm going to read out um, an, a, a section of the story. Baba Segi could never keep things in. He was open-ended. His senses were directly connected to his gut and what didn't agree with him had a way of accelerating his digestive system. Bad smells, bad news, and the sight of anything vaguely repulsive had an expulsive effect. And what I love about this is it's carried out throughout the novel really, really, really well. Every time he does encounter difficult news, he does react in some kind of way that is sometimes kind of disgusting um, in terms of his body throwing up, going to the bathroom loudly. Um, but what it does is, it does this like really excellent thing of that when you're encountering this really difficult material, you're, really, you're encountering this really difficult you know, news in the story that's obviously because you're invested in it, it makes you feel very sad. It lightens it up, it counterbalances it in a way that is so satisfying. I mean, it's really like a buffer. Um, to anything that might be really traumatic in the story is that when something crazy happens, Baba Sega needs the bathroom. And that really, like, is quite a success of really kind of um, balancing out this whatever way you might feel about things. And that is an excellent mot that's an excellent tool that, that Lola Shoyanin 
shonen uses really really well throughout the story anyway i tried my best to keep this video as short as possible um i could talk about this book endlessly but i didn't want to give any spoilers away and i want you guys to really get this book and so we can discuss it and if you've already read it reach out to me i'd love to chat with you about it it's a great book and i really enjoyed it thank you for watching this video please subscribe and share and i will have a new video up next week and i promise this time thanks bye we are africa's future and yes we are online